it all, every symptom, boils down to a form of self-punishment. And therefore, this it seems so opposite to what would actually heal, but to actually let ourselves feel that desire to punish ourselves, to let ourselves feel the, the actual self-hatred, the self-loathing, the, the shame, to, to bring up that... Because emotions are magnetic, and, and they kind of adhere, and I, I, I have found they just keep those old beliefs in place. So it's so powerful to actually let them vibrate up and out and release. And then I, I would find I'd just start to get this sense of a true freedom of choice. Once the emotion is up and out, and I can see the beliefs and see the thoughts, then authentically I can choose to not listen to them rant and rant and rant, and, you know, and abide in the stillness and the truth. But if I tried to do that intellectually before I actually felt through these things, it would be metaphysical ghosting, and, and it wouldn't work. So, with your foot, it, it, the bottom line is that, that emotion that we were just talking about, that it, it's, it's so hard initially to, to see everything as self-attack when, when we're talking about sickness. That's why I found the, the definition of autoimmune so ultimately illuminating. And I realized all forms of symptoms are self-attack. And to actually allow that up into awareness and see it for what it is. It's not anything real, but to expose it so fully that there's no part of the psyche that's trying to hide it anymore. If we trace it down a bit too, we can say that, uh, I mean, there's a great little phrase in the course, in the workbook, I am not a body and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. It's like Jesus is giving divine logic in there. I am not a body, and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. So, most people are familiar with the first part. I am not a body, you know, I am free, I am still as God created me. It's just pulling the attention off of the foot, off of the body. That's really what I am not a body is about. It's like just pulling the attention away. The second part, and my mind cannot attack. Hmm, what's he talking about there? My mind cannot attack. Um, if my mind cannot attack, what if I got all these attack thoughts going on in my, if he's, if I've got all these attack thoughts in there, and he even tells me in less than 23 I can escape the world I see by giving up attack thoughts, but he's saying in his divine logic, I am not a body and my mind cannot attack, so I cannot be sick. He's giving the perfect formula for divine healing. Well, the way it works is, the belief in separation, the belief that you could actually rip your mind away from the Creator, that you could leave your source and, and go out and make up another self, that you could leave heaven, that you could leave nirvana, is such a horrific, horrific thought that let's just call that the original attack thought. To believe you could leave your Creator. And that is so horrific that that is pushed completely out of awareness. I mean completely out of awareness. How are you doing, how are you doing today? Mm. Well, not so good, I've attacked God. You know, how many people uh, are aware of that? How are you feeling today? I'm a little tired, I must, I just, have, I've attacked God. You know, it's, there's just no connection between all those little irritations and annoyances that seem to be related to the body, and that I've attacked God. In fact, uh, he goes through his workbook lessons and he goes through, uh, he's not that far into the workbook lessons where he's going to start to make and establish a cause-effect relationship. Lesson number 13, a meaningless world engenders fear. Okay, it's an interesting lesson to read. 
Here we are, just like Friday the 13th. What's Jesus got in number 13? What's he packed in number 13? A meaningless world, world engenders fear. And then you read through the lesson, and he drops his atomic bomb at the bottom of lesson 13. He does it first in his workbook there. A meaningless world engenders fear because I think I am in competition with God. He says, you may not believe this, you may resist this, but he is making a direct cause and effect link between a sense of meaningless, a sense of illness, sickness, tragedy, anything that you perceive that's not supreme happiness in this world. A meaningless world engenders fear because I think I am in competition with God. He has, in lesson number 13, he's established a direct cause and effect link between that, whatever you're experiencing on the surface, and the belief in competition with God. What do we mean by that? Well, I think I can make a self that's different than the one that God created. That's what, in competition with God, it's like, you know, the old thing, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Well, really, <laughs> that's the question that you've got to really ask. Who is my creator? Can I create myself any way I wish to be? Self-improvement? Can I make myself to be a body instead of spirit? Can I improve myself? Can I change the body image? Can I gain weight, lose weight, look pretty, look ugly? You know, do all these things which are part of self-invention, which is really the belief that, no, oh, I'm, I'm my own creator because I can make myself any way that I want to be. Or, or, the big or, or am I as God created me? So, once we start to realize that these attack thoughts around the body, about, you know, around chronic fatigue, around the foot, around any symptom that you seem to have, that, that there's attack thoughts in the mind, and that those attack thoughts are just diluting the one original attack thought. Instead of keeping that one original attack thought and feeling that one. <laughs> you know, we say feel it, and then you can let it go. It's like human beings are not really into feeling the separation from God. The whole mind, the whole construct of the subconscious is designed to push that one way out of awareness. And that one has, as long as you're not feeling happiness, you can say, gee, I haven't allowed myself to feel that the original attack thought. If I let that one come up, like a big burp, it's <laughs> got to come up, it's like a big bubble of gas that you had down there in the mind. <laughs> yeah. And you're going around, you know, with all this gas, and yet the big bubble <laughs> underneath that's producing all the little bubbles, that's producing all those little attack thoughts that seem to involve symptoms and, and everything, that's what has to be uncovered. And Helena's going to play a song here. You want to set it up while I tell this? Little? Yeah, okay, yeah, okay I'll, I'll just set it up. But I, one time I, it came to me from the Holy Spirit that, that uh, to, to describe how the mind works was if somebody came to you and they, they had a uh, had a cup of the most potent poison on earth, and they brought a little uh, a dro eyedropper, and they took, took a bit of that potion, they said, now you have to take this. There's no way around it. You, you've got to swallow it. There's no doubt about that. You must take this, but I'll let you take it in any way that you want to take it, but you must take the potion. You must take the poison. Probably, if you were really kind of inventive and a genius, what you would do is you would say, All right, give it to me then, I'll take it. I choose to take it, but I want to, I want to mix it with something. The ocean. <laughs> I'm going over to the ocean, and I'm going to just empty it, and I'll mix it with the ocean, then I'll, t I'll take a drink. That's what time and space are. It's an attempt to dilute, that would certainly seem to dilute the poison. <laughs> right, a super homeopathic <laughs> dose. Put the potion in the ocean, and then take the gulp. So, but this is what time and space is about. It's attempting to take that one 
horrific attack thought, which is, oh my God, I separated from my Creator, and splinter it out, dilute it so much that it comes out as chronic fatigue, or a foot that won't heal, or a symptom here, a symptom there, you know. You see how it's splintered out in a diluted form, but it doesn't really face the big bubble underneath. And that's why we are doing all this mind training. We're, we're revving up our willingness to feel the feeling of that underlying belief.